praise the Lord. Hey, I'm J.B. Norman, Jr. We want you to stay tuned. Do not turn your dial. My Bible, and I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the will of the Lord. And I believe that I am going to receive a word of faith for my situation and circumstance in Jesus' name. All right. See, that's what the Lord wants you to do. You come to church to receive and obey. Faith, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, when you hear the word, he's going to give you some instructions. Okay? Most of the times people pray, but they don't hear. They don't listen to what God is telling them. It's a day and time that we have to learn to, after we pray. We got to learn to listen to what God says. Prayer is a two-way what? It's a two-way avenue. It's a two-way street. It's just not a one-way thing. And when you believe in God for something, you pray, he's going to speak to you to do something. And whatever he speaks to you to do, it's going to be in line with God. What? He's going to give you some instructions. Faith without corresponding actions to the instructions that you receive is dead. See, that's why a lot of times we wait on things and we haven't received what God uh, uh, wants us to have or what we are prayed about simply because we have not listened to the instructions that God has told us. Now, just keep my music going. Praise the Lord. Keep my music going. Don't shut it off. Praise God. Glory, glory, glory to his name. It's just praise the Lord. It's a magnified his name because he's worthy to be praised. Praise the Lord. Um, I heard in the spirit realm, I heard that uh, needs, needs, needs. How many have needs? Needs. Now, you have needs. Now, how many was in here when Sister Norma was ministering? Okay, those needs going to be met if you heard what she said. You got it? If you heard what she said, those needs, I'm just, this is just corresponding action to what she said. Okay, those needs will be met if you hear and obey God. You can be willing, he said, if you be willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. You can be willing and don't be obedient. So you don't eat. Y'all understand? So those needs, she said in what, October? From October to the 31st of December, your needs will be met. Okay? Needs will be met. Take that and continue to what? Confess it and look for the instructions of God. Okay? And those needs will be what? Will be met. Praise the Lord. Glorify His name. Now, uh, I have a number here. Uh, God give me numbers and things. I don't know whether it's fit anyone in here at this time. 1619. I have 1619. It could be your social security uh, address or something like that. Do I have anybody in here that, that fits you? 1619, okay? Maybe they're not in here today. All right. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let's praise him. Let's magnify his name because he's worthy to be praised. All right. Now, we've been talking on a series of lessons of the supernatural. People have church without the supernatural. Now, you have churches today that don't teach the supernatural, don't talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit, uh, the evidence of speaking in other tongues, ask the Spirit to give others. Those churches mostly are not challenged. The enemy don't, does not have to challenge you if you, are, if you are not teaching on God's weaponry, God's supernatural power. If you're just going to church to sing, you understand, to have a good time and meet somebody and all that sort of thing, you won't be challenged. You got it? So you got most churches today don't even teach on salvation. 
let alone being filled with the Holy Spirit, let alone speaking in other tongues, let alone the power of God. So now if you're in a, if you're in a church and they're not teaching about the supernatural things of God, I'm teaching about angelic visitation, angels, where every, or everybody else talk about the devil and talk about demons. Demons always talk about what the devil is doing. Never mention God's angels. Now, when you're teaching on the supernatural, I, I, I've been reading and studying on the book of Acts. Supernatural power of God in the book of Acts. Angelic visitations, visions, dreams, getting of, the, of, of men getting getting put in jail because of signs and wonders. Now, you're not challenged if you're not talking about signs and wonders. You have no challenges. You don't have any. If you're not talking about healing, you don't have any. Because the enemy, he doesn't want you healed. You got it? So the average church never talks about divine healing. Never have a word of knowledge. Never operate in the manifestations of the gifts of the Spirit. Don't operate in that, in that at all. Don't talk about go ye in all the world and you preach the gospel to every creature. That's the purpose of you being here. The purpose of you being here is to duplicate yourself. You're supposed to have somebody sitting next to you today. That's the purpose of church. Church. That's the purpose of church. Get your eyes off other people and put it on what you're supposed to be doing. He told you to go in all the world and preach the other God. You ain't in nobody else's mind or nobody else's head. You got it? You got your own mind. You have your own purpose. Got it? You have the vision of this church. You got it? Praise the Lord. Now, uh, we're talking about what? Angels. Ministering what? Spirits. Let's look at Hebrews 1.14. Let's look at Hebrews 1.14. Hebrews 1 and verse 14. Hebrews 1 and verse 14. I won't read together in concert. Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. New Living Translation, this is the way the New Living Translation reads it like this. But angels, that word servant means angels, but angels are only servants. They are spirits sent from God to care for those who will receive salvation. How many have received salvation? Well, you have an angel. You have angels. You got it? You have angels that is going to minister for you. And, and, and most of you all in here never heard any of this. Never had zero of this until you heard me teaching on it. Zero. Uh, but you heard about the devil and demons. Mm, you heard about the, all these spirits and stuff. They, they getting me and all that. You heard about all that. But you never heard about your angels. You have what? Angels. You have ministering spirits that are sent forth to how many saved? How many, what I mean by saved, how many made Jesus the Lord of your life? That's salvation. Okay, you got angels. Okay? All right, you got angels. And they, 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 your angels is, is able to combat any demon that come against you. Now, we talked about, uh, let's look at angels in the Old Testament. I'll give you some examples. Let's look at angels in the Old Testament. Let's look at Genesis 19.12. So Genesis 19.12. And that's in the first part of the book. And you can't miss it. Okay? 19.12. We're going to look at uh, angels. They protect God's people. Angels protect you. So you want to be, you want to know that you are protected. They said, angel of the Lord encamp around about those that reverence him. He brings forth what delivers. You want to be protected. Everybody in here 
has had close calls in life, but you was protected by an angel. You was a step away from eternity, but you was protected. God has angels protecting you. He have you. Everybody has a God and angel. And he protected you. You see? So you have to, you have to uh, fill your mind, or re renew your mind with divine protection because we are living in the what you call the last of last of days. And man, there's some horrible stuff being done. There's some horrible stuff being done to children. Children, just just children, just, just perverse, pregnant ch children. Crazy stuff out here. You get my point? So you got to know that you have what? And you have an angel to help you in these times. Everybody for getting shot. Getting killed. Everybody got a gun. Everybody got a pistol. Everybody playing cowboy and Indian. I saw a serpent walking the streets of Birmingham years ago. Everybody. Everybody got a gun. And they're not afraid to put it out either. So you got to know. You got some crazy folks driving out here. You got these great big trucks and red big reds. You understand? These folks, they be driving, you understand, trying to get, trying to uh, dump a load where they can get another load. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they be sleeping, all that sort of thing. Man, it's dangerous out here. You even got people that be in cars, you know, that, that just, just, just drive crazy. Cut out in front of you. Hmm? Crazy, crazy, crazy. Man, it's dangerous out here. See, so you have to know that you have a protector. That you have an angel to protect you. You have to know that. You see, that's what church is about. Church is to inform you in what you have. Okay? So, and you also have, uh, uh, now, now you know this satanic. Parents leaving their children in a car. Huh? And they dying. Don't remember that they are in there. They so stressed and get trying to get to the, the job or trying to do. I don't. The, I, you know that's demonic. Now, you, that has to be demonic, and the most it's not intentional either. They just forget that they leave. How you gonna forget that you have left your child in a car? That got to be the devil got your mind. Has to be. Demonic. But if you have the angels of God, that angel is going to let you know that your child is in that car. See, this is a day and time that you have to listen to God by the Holy Spirit and angels. You got to listen. You got to learn how to listen, not just hear. Hearing is not listening. You can hear, don't listen. Have, have anybody just talked to you and been talking to you and just talked to you and then, then you and you're not listening to them? Uh, you focus your mind, your body, your spirit, your mind way over here. Some way else about what somebody else said. Correct? Isn't that how it works? So the enemy wants to keep you what? From being focused. You have to learn how to be focused in this day and hour. You got to be focused. And you got to learn how to listen, and you can't listen to everybody. See, you can't listen to every wind of doctrine that come along. Every wind of doctrine could be just people, and just preacher. Could be folks that want you in the same shape that they in. Huh? So that's the purpose of being taught. You understand? Not preached to, but being taught. You understand? Well, you won't be, what? Trying about with every word, wind or doctrine that come along, you need you need to know about you have you need to know about angels that you have. You need to know that that you have protection. Okay. All right. Now, do everybody have that? I just gave you a chance to get turn the pages there. Genesis nineteen twelve. I don't think y'all had too much trouble finding that. Hmm? Genesis nineteen twelve. 
protect God's people. This is talking about Solomon and Gomorrah. Now, I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation. I'm going to skip the King James Translation, and I'm going to read it in the New Living Translation because the New Living Translation is the way we talk. You understand? It's the way we talk. Now, let's look at uh, uh, Genesis 19, that's the 12th verse. Now, I'm going to start at the 10th verse. 19 what? 10. But the two angels reached out and pulled Lot into the, into the door. Then they blinded the men of Solom so they couldn't find the door. It said two what? Two angels. It was Solomon and Gomorrah. God was trying to deliver uh, his people, you understand. He was trying to deliver them, Lot and all them. He was trying to deliver them from these perverted people. They were perverted. They didn't want, they didn't want, a lot often said, well now, you can go, you can have my daughter. No, they wanted men. They were homosexuals. You understand? They were homosexual spirits. So what God did was he sent, what, two angels. And these angels reached out and pulled a lot into the door. Then they blinded the men of Sodom so they could could not find the door. So now, here's God's angels blinding folks, bringing deliverance. Mm, you on your job, God, and somebody harassing you on your job, huh? Your angel can be can go to work. Mm, your angel can go to work. <laughs> okay. Do you have any other relatives? Twelve verse. Do you have any other relatives here? In the city, the angels ask. Now, here's angels talking. You got it? Here's the angels talking, and these angels are not in the spirit. He ain't seeing no dream. This here are angels coming in what? Coming in physical form, in bodily form, just like me and you. Okay? Do you have any other rhetoric here, to, uh, here in the city? The angel said, get them out of this place. Son-in-law, son, daughters, or any, or anyone else. For we will destroy the city completely because the stench of the place has reached the Lord and he has sent us to destroy it. So God sends angels to what? To destroy cities and certain things. Okay. You don't have to destroy them. You got, you got doctrine going around now of, of, of spiritual warfare against the enemy. The enemy already defeated. Hmm? Got folk going around, going around pulling down demons and strongholds and all of that with no power and no authority. And then the enemy turn around and attack them. Hmm? Hmm? Spiritual warfare. Warfare for what? You understand when the devil has already been what? He's already been defeated. And you trying to, you trying to, in, you trying to uh, be the enforcer. <laughs> and you bound. And you messed up. See, you have to watch what you're listening to. See. He said, do you have any way? When God delivers people, he delivers not just you, but he concerned about your relatives also. Okay, now that number, that word of knowledge that I call out, it might be one of you all's relatives. Check them out. He, because he is what? He is concerned not just about you, he's concerned about your what? Your brother, your sister, your mom, your daddy, your children, your son-in-law. He's concerned about all that. Fourteen verse. So Lot rushed out to tell his daughter, daughter's fiance, quick, get out of the city. The Lord is going to destroy it. But the young men thought he was only joking. At dawn, the next morning, the angels became intense, hurried. They said to Lot, take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Go out 
here right now or you will be caught in the destruction of the city. Do you know you can be caught into something that God don't want you to be caught in that's only, only designed for the wicked and designed for the evil? If you don't what? You know, listen. Now this angel is going to what? He's going to, to he's doing everything he can do to cause Lot to listen. See, God will go to the extreme to cause you to listen. But God not going to pick, did he, was he going to just pick them up and take them out of the city? You got, ain't not angels could have just picked them up and just carried them out to the city. But God, faith requires what? Obedience. You got to believe what the angel, what? He had to believe what the angels told him. Now you can say, Lot, y'all, y'all, get it up here. And we angels, we're going to just pick you up and we're going to take you out of this city. No, 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 no. Most Christians are like that. They think God going to do everything for them without God giving you some faith instructions. God has to give you some instructions to do. If you don't listen to them, it won't work. So let's look at the 16 verse. When Lot still hesitated, he said, now this rascal still hesitated. That sounds like some of you all, right? Huh? God told you some of you still and wonder what's that God. Especially in your giving. Well, now the devil ain't going to never tell you to give. Huh? And now when you give, you always, you are not going to ever be penalized for giving. The devil ain't going to tell you to give. Small or large. Now, always remember that, okay? Because he don't want the kingdom to be advanced. He'll tell you to give to some old unworthy cause. Correct? He'll tell, you to put, he'll tell you to put your tithe and your offerings on some shoes and a dress. Huh? To try to impress somebody. He'll do that. Mm, hallelujah. Mm, you got to have this new outfit for the state and AM game. And it'll tell you that, hey, your tithes, they don't need nothing. You understand, God? But tithing and offerings is for you. All right? Won't he talk to you? Huh? So, <laughs> so this rascal still what? Hesitated. When Lot hesitated, the angel sized his hand. He took him by his hand and the hands of his wife and two daughters and rushed them to safety outside. Now, I take that back. Now this was critical to God destroying the earth at that time. And he wanted to get them out of the city for a covenant to establish his covenant. He wanted a lot to establish his covenant. So now, what did he do? He just took them and pulled them. Just took them on out. See, but he'd rather for them to what? Obey. He'd rather for you to obey. So don't you take those chances because he ain't pulling you. <laughs> huh, you're going to have to obey. All right? He going to take you by the hand and pull you. You're going to have to what? Obey. Especially if you've been sitting up under the wood and you know how faith works, okay? When Lot still hesitated, angel sides sized his hand and the hands of his wife and two daughters and rushed them to safety outside of the city for the Lord was much merciful. That was some mercy there. God don't grant mercy all the time. Hmm? You can play around and believe God for something and uh, he tell you to give you a word of faith to obey and you don't obey Mercy might not come to you. Hmm? And mercy is God's word willing to operate on your behalf even though you don't deserve it, okay? Run for your lives, the angel warned. Do not stop anywhere in the valley and don't look back. Escape to the mountains or you will die. But it was not God's plan for them to what? To die, right? So God, what he did, he gave him a little help, didn't he? He gave him a little help, didn't he? Hmm? And he led him right there to the path. And he said, now y'all run. The angel didn't run with him. He told him to run. 
Okay? And he told them, don't look back. Who's given the instructions here? God. God. Not the Holy Spirit, but God. But the angels are given the, the instructions. So see, God used the Holy Spirit and angels. They worked together. Y'all understand? Angels gave them, was giving them what? The instructions. Were giving them what? A word of knowledge and word of wisdom. A word of wisdom was well, you're going to die if you don't get out of here. You're going to be destroyed with these homosexuals. You're going to be destroyed with these perverse people. I'm trying to get you out. Want you to get out. I sent angels here to talk to you. Sent angels in what? Human form to talk to you. Now they, when they got out, Lot's wife, she turned back. She turned around. And she turned into a pillar of salt. Turned around. She didn't get out. She still was tied up with that lifestyle back there. And also, she was still disobedient. She still had in her mind, I'm going to run now. I'm going to run with them, but I got to look back. I got to go back. I got to see, I got to see what's happening back there. Did God really destroy this city? Is he really going to destroy? I got to see for myself. Can't you take God at his word? Take, take, can't you take the angel of God at his word? Thank you, Jesus. I've someone in here, uh, I believe you have a little touch of arthritis in your hand here. Around your, they get stiff around your knuckle areas here. They get a little stiff. Thank you, Jesus. Who is that? Got a little touch of arthritis. A little touch of arthritis. All right. Praise the Lord. Now, I was in the spirit one. Huh? I didn't know that. But I saw knuckles. I saw a, God gave me a picture of a hand like this. And he said, it's a touch of arthritis. But Sister Howard, you're not going to have that anymore. Okay? You're not going to have that anymore. By the power of the Holy Spirit, God will command these arthritis to go and leave her in Jesus' name. Now move it around and thank God for it. Glory to God. You should have no more pain. Glory to God. Your grandmother, she has it in her, specifically in her hands. For she's standing in prophecy. So now prophecy. So when God gives a word of knowledge, it's not just for who? You. It can be you, but it's for your family too. You got it? Father, in the name of Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, God, I command arthritis to leave these hands, these knuckles, these bones. In Jesus' name, I speak life to these hands by God's power. Come on, give him praise. Come on, magnify his name. <laughs> so when God gives you, when God gives you a word of knowledge, it has to be spoken. God said, let that be and it was what? Light. Let it be light. And it was. See, it's supposed to be spoken. And when it's spoken, see, the word and the spirit work together. And when it's spoken, it manifests. See? So now you can do the same thing. You can do the same thing. You see? Praise the Lord. Baba. Thank you, Jesus. Holy. 